feel like I've been getting behind a little bit on the live videos from 1 Timothy, and today I'm joined by a special guest star, Shadow. Usually Lizzie comes, but Shadow's here with me today, and that's why I have this UK throw on me, not because I'm getting so terribly old and decrepit, because this cat has such sharp talons and likes to uh, cut through my shirts. She's something. Anyway, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Really had a great time last night at our Bible study. Uh, Shadow was not there, in fact. Neither was Lizzie. But the last few weeks, getting into this letter from Paul to Timothy, one of his young charges, young protégés in the church, has taught us so much about what are the expectations for a church, what are the expectations for us as Christians and for leaders in the church, for men, for women, for all of us. Last night, the subject was elders and deacons, and it you know, went into just behavior as a church person, a Christian overall. Right now, I'm going to read from the first seven verses of chapter 3. And this is from the Legacy Standard Bible, which is the updated version of the New American Standard, one that a lot more of us in our church are looking at because it's a very literal translation. So here are verses 1 through 7. The uh, subheading says, Overseers and Deacons. It is a trustworthy saying, if any man aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a good work. An overseer, then, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, sensible, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or pugnacious, but considerate, peaceable, free from the love of money, leading his own household well, having his children in submission with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to lead his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? And not a new convert, so that he will not become conceited and fall into the condemnation of the devil. And he must have a good reputation with those outside the church, so that he will not fall into reproach and the snare of the devil." We were looking at this uh, last night one little bit at a time and looking through these qualifications. And it's not every single thing that a uh, an elder or a pastor or a shepherd or a a bishop needs to be. It, it but it has a lot. And one of the things that is a uh, defining characteristics is where it says in verse two, able to teach. So it spoke in chapter two about deacons being servants. And there were a lot of, you know, requirements of that as far as character goes, but it didn't list the ability to teach. Whereas in uh, the elder verses one through seven, it very much does. And um, we came to the conclusion, you know, the 15 or so of us in the room that we're talking about this particular scripture is that this is good for anybody. You know, this is not just good for a pastor or an elder or a church leader. This is good for anybody that wants to be in a church, part of a church, and uh, hold their heads high. Because it says in here, you know, to have a good reputation with those outside the church so that they don't fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. And right before that, it says, not a new convert so they will not become conceited and fall into the condemnation of the devil. The devil's mentioned twice here about the snares that can come, one from... Uh, being a new convert, not having everything figured out as well as maybe you should in an, a leadership position, and the other just uh, falling into behavior that would ruin your reputation outside of the church. Now, of course, reputation does not serve as the be-all and end-all because as Christians, many of you all know that as you, if you're watching this as a churchgoer, as a Christian, that people are going to hate on you. They just are. And a lot of the times it's because you are Christians, because you believe what you say you believe and are part of a church. And much of the world doesn't want that anymore. In fact, it's it's less vogue right now, certainly than any time in my 53 years. And it's going to get nothing but worse, in my opinion, as we get closer and closer to Jesus coming back in the sky to call his believers home. But it does mean something. Because if we want to further the gospel, we need to be attractive to the world in a way of just our character. Not attractive to the world by being of the world or being like the world, because that's anti what this book is about. 
but in fact being attractive to the world in a way that if people want to just besmirch your character or accuse you of things or say you're a terrible person, that it won't stick because it's not true. And that's what this is talking about in verses 1 through 7 of 1 Timothy chapter 3. I'll be doing a video again very soon from chapter 4. I'll be speaking from the first five verses of chapter 4 this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday. Now, that's not a Palm Sunday scripture, but my goodness, it sure fits well with what happens uh, in the aftermath of Palm Sunday and Holy Week, the original version uh, in the Bible with Jesus. So join us this Sunday. We have choir at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock worship, and then right after worship, all the folks that are involved in our Easter dramas, we're asking them to stay after for a little bit to just practice and go over things and make sure that we're ready for Easter Sunday because Easter Sunday's here in a week and a half. And in the meantime, go Cats. We'll see you this weekend. Bye.